The reality of every producer, iOS or otherwise, is that sometimes your creativity is going to push the boundaries of your hardware. In the iPad music production world, depending on which iPad model you have, you may encounter those boundaries more often. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you seven tips that will help you keep your iPad running nice and smooth, even when you're throwing your biggest projects at it. What is up creatives? It's Jarrell, your music technologist, and man am I happy to say that again. Happy New Year. If you're watching, this is the first video I've dropped of 2022, and I'm super stoked to continue giving you guys more content this year. But we're gonna jump straight into the content, and we're gonna talk about some of these ways you guys can squeeze more juice out of your music production, specifically in Beatmaker 3, but a lot of these apply really to any DAW. So we're gonna jump right into it. So my first tip to you is really just kind of more general advice when it comes to monitoring your performance on your iPad. It's gonna to be to check your CPU gauge uh, with every single change you do in your music, you know, any big change. So let me show you where that is right here in Beatmaker 3. We go to settings and you see right down here uh, is our CPU. Right now it's at 0%. And when it comes to iOS music production, especially in Beatmaker 3, you're really not going to be killing much RAM. I wouldn't be too concerned about your RAM. Um, you want it, you're going to be concerned about your CPU and how much it can handle. And once this thing starts peaking around 75 or 80 percent, uh, is when you start to get, you know, weird artifacts like little pops or glitches and things like that. And that's when you're really going to have to start doing some things to help get your performance under control. So uh, the second tip actually is going to be change your latency settings. So right here in the settings panel, you can see latency. So what latency is basically is the distance between when something happens on your iPad versus when you hear it. The higher that number is, the longer that duration is going to be between those two. So obviously, if you're going to be playing something in live, like on your pads or on your MIDI controller or whatever, you're going to want a pretty low latency setting and you're going to want something like 128. 256 also works generally for playing things in. Uh, two, I wouldn't go any higher than 256 if you're going to be doing anything that requires you to play something in live. Beyond that, um, is where we would start talking about going to a higher latency setting. And that would be for more for monitoring. So if you've got a whole track down and it's kind of heavy, that's when you're going to want to start increasing it. So for example, let me load up a project here that has a lot going on in it that's going to require me to bring the latency up. This is the uh, the song I dropped most recently with my, my brother Noble. It's called It's Still Joy. It's a Christmas song. I know we're past Christmas. But uh, I did that, all of that in Beatmaker 3, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what's happening with my CPU in the settings when we do that. So already off the bat, before I play anything, you can already see because it's loading all of these plugins I have in here, uh, before I even press play, the, the CPU is up pretty high. So we're going to test and see if it'll even handle it. Let me throw the headphones on real quick. See, we're getting up to 82, 74. It's getting pretty high. So far, it's playing well, though. Yeah. Uh, and it's still tis the season. We've been running on E, but still believing. Best is yet ahead, will beat the odds like even Stevens. Uh, I'm talking, making bacon like I'm beans in. So. It is handling it at 256. Let's see what happens if we try to put it at 128. Uh, we'll start in a more busy part of the song, like leading up into the chorus. Oh yeah, see, it's not handling it. <laughs> so 128%, yeah, we're, we're killing the CPU on this one. So this is one of those examples, once, once you've got a lot of plugins and things loaded up, you're gonna wanna start increasing your, your latency settings. We're getting around 100% CPU on 128, so let's hit 256, right? We're getting back down to that 60% or so range. If I hit 512, that's getting us down into the 50s. And if I hit 1024, boom, we're in the green now, 42. So you're basically giving your iPad more time to do the things that it needs to do, to process the things it needs to process before you hear it. 
So when would you ever use this? 1024 samples. I did use 1024 samples while I was working on this track. And that was specifically when I was doing things like monitoring or even just sequencing or adding effects to vocals and stuff like that. Because in that case, I'm not doing anything live unless I need to record an automation, in which case I would want to turn it back down. But when I'm monitoring or doing effects and stuff like that, I'll turn the latency up. It gives me a nice headroom with performance. So definitely, definitely utilize this, especially if you already have all your patterns worked out when you're making a beat and you want to just start throwing effects and stuff on. You can crank your, your latency up and, and that'll be good. So tip number three is going to be use plugins that are less resource intensive when possible. So this one kind of flows into the next one too, but you need to start to get a handle on which plugins are eating up your CPU the most. For example, if I go in here and I take a look at, you know, some of my vocals, this is my verse vocals. If I go in here, I've got a lot of heavy plugins loaded here. I know the FabFilter plugins tend to be pretty resource intensive and the Core Presser by Clevergrand is also pretty resource intensive. And I've learned that by, you know, you will go and you add a new plugin and then you check your CPU and see what percentage it changes by. And that tells you about how much CPU percentage each plugin takes. And I've learned that, you know, Core Presser and most of the FabFilter plugins can tend to take between three to 5% out of my CPU. Sometimes it gets down to two, you know, somewhere in there. And so those are pretty heavy. That's if you load a few instances of that, you're already, you know, taking 15% of your CPU. And mind you, this is an M1 iPad Pro. So it's got a beast of a CPU. If you're using something, you know, a little less beefy, you're gonna fill that up quicker. So with that in mind, try to use plugins that are a little lighter. The best way to do that is by doing what is the next tip. That's tip number four, and that's use stock plugins whenever possible. And I'm referring mostly to effects plugins here. So for example, you don't need something like Pro-Q3 for everything. Now this is a pretty killer EQ right here. I, I love it. But if you're just cutting some of the highs off, you can just load up the stock SV filter, which is a single value filter. And there you go, just roll your highs off and that's gonna use so much less CPU power than using something like Pro-Q3 just for that. So try to use the stock effects plugins whenever possible. That also comes down to instruments too. A lot of instruments can be pretty heavy. And again, you gotta learn which ones are taking up the most CPU and check your CPU meter as you add plugins and that's gonna help you figure that out. But if you want to use some stock instruments, that really helps instead of using AUV3 plugins. Tip number five is going to be export or record your tracks uh, once you've got the effects set and bake them in. Now, this is something that may be you know a little risky to do if you're not sure, if you're not dead set on whatever you've done, because once you've recorded it to a track and you're essentially freezing the track, then you can't change it, right? So this is going to be for cases where you know this is what I want this instrument or vocal to sound like and I'm gonna go ahead and export it. Now, use that on the things that are the least risky, you know? For example, in this track, this is the instrumental version of the track I just played for you, but I have this uh, keyboard playing at the, at the beginning. So I do have some effects loaded on that. If I go in here, it's just a few effects. If I had something with a few more intense effects, I'd maybe use that. Um, and Housemark 1 is not that resource intensive. Uh, but for example, I could easily record this to a new track. So let's try that. I'm gonna add a new audio track. And that's right here, audio track 15. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to audio input, go to internal, and we're gonna set that to Housemark 1. And then we'll hit the record there. And then we'll start from the beginning, hit record. So if we look at that, there we go. We have audio right there. Soloing that. Boom, easy as that. You can do that with any track. Another way to do it would be to go ahead and export just this track. So I have this track for the full song looped out. I can go up here to the top hamburger menu, hit export, 
Go to audio export. I can go to tracks, hit house mark one, and we'll do it for the full loop. I'm gonna hit loop there, that's 58 bars, and I can hit start export. And that will bounce out a track into my exports folder um, in the files app for Beatmaker 3. And you can even get to that you know, from in here in your files. Um, but that'll export out an audio file, and you can just drag that audio file in. Uh, it's really easy. So definitely consider bouncing out tracks. And once you've done that, obviously the next thing to do would be to just delete this main instrument. It's gonna free up a lot of CPU room. So tip number six is gonna be use auxiliary channels for your effects as much as possible. So I have some, some vocals that I've put into this auxiliary track right here. On this auxiliary track, I have, uh, I have a little reverb, a compressor, and some side chain going on. Oh, and an SV filter. So all of these effects, if I didn't use an auxiliary channel, I'd have to put them on all of these individual vocals. So I have three vocals running to this. If you look here, I actually have four. This is send one, send one sends to aux one. So there's two auxiliary channels here by default that send one and send two. There are more sends, you just have to make more auxiliary channels. So you can hit add track, and hit create an aux track. And that adds a third aux track right there. Now, how do I get to the knob for the third aux? You just select the bank you want right here. Then we'll hit all sends down here at the bottom. Boom. Now we've got all the sends. You can have up to eight. So send three right here is gonna send some volume over to auxiliary three. And that is exactly what I did for these vocals. So I have some, some oohs and some ahs going on in the background of this track, and those are going through the auxiliary channel. So if I play the very beginning of this song, you'll be able to hear those vocals and see auxiliary one. Boom, so all that reverb you're hearing with those vocals is one channel of reverb. Now, if I had to do that on all four of these channels, that would eat up my CPU pretty quick. So I'm saving myself a little CPU power by putting my reverb just on this auxiliary channel, and I'm sending the volume from my vocal channels over to the auxiliary channel and it's, it's really is a CPU saver. It's also really good for doing vocal production. You know, if you're recording a song and you're engineering and you're, and you're mixing and stuff like that, using aux channels is really good for that because you have to use a lot of effects often when doing vocal processing. So tip number seven is going to be work on battery power whenever possible. I know that sounds counterintuitive when it comes to getting more CPU power, but here's the reason why. Just like every device out there, iPads thermal throttle. They thermal throttle because they don't have any fans in them, right? <laughs> they're, they're fanless. And so there's no way to cool them down externally when they're getting hot. So if you're charging them, you're generating a lot of heat usually, and your iPad will start to thermal throttle, and that's going to give you less performance in your CPU, and you're gonna lose headroom. For example, when I was working on the song, um, It's Still Joy, I was working on processing all the vocals, and I had a lot of effects running, um, and I had my latency already set all the way to the to the top, and I was starting to peak out. And I at the time I had my iPad plugged in right here like I normally do. I went ahead and I unplugged it and just plugged my headphones directly into the iPad, and it dropped my CPU percentage almost by half. So my iPad was getting pretty hot doing all the things I was doing while being plugged into the charger. So think about that. If you have enough battery. Maybe you don't run it plugged into some power if you're doing something really intense. You'll save yourself a little bit of headroom because your iPad won't be so hot and you can avoid some of that thermal throttling. So work on battery power whenever you can. That is going to do it for my seven tips for you guys to get the most out of your music production when it comes to performance on this iPad. Quick question for you, which tip was the most helpful for you? Maybe something was like, oh, I hadn't thought about that quite like that before. Let me know down in the comments. I would love to chat it up with you guys down there. And I wanna remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're digging the content that you're getting here, there's gonna be a lot more of it coming at you this year. Definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video.